Dr. D Flow. Caution, electrical hazard. Hello, my name is Dr. D Flo, and I want to welcome you to my addressable LED build guide, powered by an Arduino. This project will only be suitable for up to 100 LEDs. If you are interested in creating a system with hundreds or even thousands of addressable LEDs, check out my other build, linked in the description. First, let's go over cost. To set up one meter of lights, it will be $60 in consumables and then an additional $18 per meter. A soldering iron is not included in this price, but a lot of these parts can be scavenged to save money. Check out my website for the complete list of supplies needed for this build. drdflow.com forward slash Arduino LED. I want to quickly talk about power supplies. In the overview video, I talked about how each diode draws 20 milliamps and an RGB strip has three diodes per light, so 60 milliamps per light. The strip I am using in this tutorial is an RGBW strip, which means it has four diodes per light, red, green, blue, and white, so 80 milliamps per light. If you buy 60 RGBW LEDs, you will need a five amp power supply I found a spare 5 volt 5 amp power supply saving me an extra $10. Please note that the Arduino code I will be using is not directly compatible with RGB LEDs. You will have to make a few changes for it to work, so I recommend using RGBW LEDs. Unfortunately, shopping for addressable LEDs is a little difficult due to the nomenclature. The LEDs I use in this build are NeoPixel strips. The name NeoPixel has no significance. This is just what Adafruit has branded their addressable LEDs that use WS2812 and SK6812 drivers. If you purchase your strips from another company, make sure that they use these drivers or else the code provided will not be able to communicate with them. Adafruit also has addressable LEDs called DotStar. These will not work for the tutorial because of this reason. NeoPixel LEDs come in different densities and colors. The white refers to the strip color. So as you can see here, this is an RGB LED strip that is white. Like, the strip is white. Not that there's a white LED. It's kind of confusing. So when you're looking for the RGBW strip, you're going to see RGBW, and then the strip can either be white or black. Here is our circuit. On the left, we have our positive and negative wires from our power supply. The Arduino and LEDs will be powered from the same outlet. In addition to the Arduino and LEDs, we have a 1000 microfarad capacitor in parallel. When the power supply is switched on, the capacitor will have very little resistance because it has zero charge. Therefore, all of the current will run through the capacitor and back through the negative branch. This is important because a voltage spike can occur when some power supplies are first plugged in. This voltage spike would not only destroy the first LED, but also the Arduino. Please note, polymer capacitors such as the ones we are using are polar, which means that the positive and negative wires have to be connected in a specific order to the capacitor. Most capacitors have a white mark to symbolize the side that the negative wire should be connected to. The capacitor will literally blow if the wires are reversed. After the capacitor becomes charged, then the current starts to flow through the rest of the circuit. This small lag is unnoticeable. After the capacitor, the electrons flow to the Arduino through the 5 volt pin. The 5 volt pin is unregulated, so higher voltages will ruin the Arduino. However, this is okay because we are using a 5 volt power supply and a capacitor. In the video, you will see me using the VN pin, which is regulated. However, this is incorrect because the VN pin is only really meant for 7 to 12 volts. After the Arduino, the electrons flow through the LED strip. I want to quickly talk about the negative branch. The Arduino has three ground pins. So instead of splicing the negative wire, like I did with the positive wire, 
I just simply took a second wire and connected to the adjacent ground as can you see in the schematic. This was a little bit cleaner to do, wire management wise. Finally, the data originates from Digital Pin 6. Any digital pin can be used, however the code will have to be modified. The data has to traverse a 470 ohm resistor before arriving to the first LED. The resistor plays a similar role as the capacitor, preventing a voltage spike from damaging the first LED. Depending on how many meters you buy, and your luck, your LED strips may come with pre-soldered wires to the LEDs, or you'll have to solder your own wires to the copper contacts, as I am doing now. Part of my terrible soldering, I could not find my flux pin. Flux helps solder flow, so it's a good idea to use one. You might need a friend to hold the wires when soldering. If you're struggling, there are a lot of great guides on YouTube on how to solder. This next part is optional, but I want to be able to disconnect my LEDs easily from the system for transportation. The copper contacts can break off if the data, 5 volt, or ground moves too much. I'm using Molex crimps to add female and male connectors for quick connect and disconnect from the system. Next, cut the male connector off of your power supply. Strip back the sheathing to reveal two wires. Hopefully the wires will be color coded. Red is universal for positive and will be our 5 volt supply and black is negative and is our ground. Also, solid or dashes on the outside of a wire will most likely indicate a positive wire and by default, the second wire would be negative. Checking the wires with a multimeter could save a headache in the future because mixing these wires up will fry your first LED and Arduino. Make sure the power supply is unplugged when working on the circuit. The first component we will solder is the capacitor. Remember, the white marking is the negative side. Also, for a double check, the longer leg of the capacitor is where the positive input is. Because everything is in parallel, the wiring is going to look a little weird. Refer back to the circuit diagram if you get confused. Next, I have attached two more wires to the capacitor, and these will power the Arduino. A little bit of electrical tape will keep these wires from touching each other. I am using a male connector to supply the 5 volts and ground to the Arduino. I am sliding a long red wire that will supply the positive 5 volts to the LEDs into this connector. Then I am soldering the positive 5 volts from the capacitor and power supply to a small piece of copper exposed above the connector both the Arduino and LEDs will receive 5 volts. I could have done the same procedure for the ground, but the Arduino has three ground pins. So I decided to use one of these ground pins as the input and another one as the output for the LEDs. This just allowed me to forego an extra solder. If you use two power supplies, one for your Arduino and one for your LEDs, then you will need to make sure that you ground your LEDs to the power supply and the Arduino. This is why the LED strips with the pre-soldered wires comes with two black wires that are connected to the same copper contact. The reason for this is that the power supply needs a completed circuit, so positive and negative wires running from the power supply and back, and the data needs a completed circuit back to the Arduino, which is through this ground. So you need two grounds. So in this method right now, we're kind of we're bypassing that need to have two wires soldered to the LED. If you do not have these male and female connectors, don't worry, the 22 gauge wire fits pretty snugly into the female Arduino connector, but you'll have to keep an eye on these wires because if they dislodge, they could cause a short. So I just plugged the wires into the Arduino. Remember, I plugged my 5 volts into the VN pin, which is wrong, so you should plug yours into the 5 volt pin. Next, we need to prepare the data line. I am soldering a resistor to the white data wire to prevent voltage spikes. Some heat shrink will cover up the exposed wire. Now it is time to connect the data, 5 volts, and ground to the LED strip. Remember, the data line goes into digital Arduino pin 6. You should also never connect the 5 volt or data to the LEDs when the power supply is plugged in or the Arduino is on. I'm going to create another video on how to code these Arduino based LEDs to beat match the songs and other lighting effects. 
but I'm going to show you guys real quick how to install the Adafruit addressable LED library and upload the example code for some pretty cool out of the box effects. First, we need to download the software to program the Arduino, the Arduino IDE. Navigate to arduino.cc, click download, pick your operating system and installer and click just download. Next, we need to download the code specifically for the NeoPixels or the WS2812 and SK6812 drivers. Google Adafruit NeoPixel Library or click the GitHub link in the description. Download the file. Unzip. Remove master from the name. Then we need to move this file to the Arduino libraries folder. So copy. Open up programs. Arduino. Libraries. Paste. Next, plug your Arduino into your computer and run the Arduino IDE. Now we need to tell the IDE where our physical Arduino is at. Go to Tools, Board, and make sure your type of Arduino is selected. I use an Arduino Uno and this is the one I listed on my website. Next, we have to specify the USB port the Arduino is connected to. Go to Tools, Port, and it should give you an indication of which port the Arduino is connected to. If you can't tell which COM number your Arduino is plugged into, open up Device Manager. Scroll down to Ports and Expand. Now we can clearly see my Arduino is connected to COM port 5. If this is not the case for you, unplug and replug your Arduino back in because your computer may have failed to install the driver. When everything is correct, go back to the IDE, go to File, Examples, Adafruit NeoPixel, RGBW Strand Test, and then please note this will not work for an RGB strand. You will have some weird lighting effects and flickering. We need to change a couple of parameters. First check and make sure your data pin is 6. If not, change it in the program. Then change the amount of LEDs to match your number. Finally, you can change the brightness to 100% if you have a power supply with enough amps to supply 80 milliamps per LED with 100 or 200 milliamps to spare to power the Arduino. Once these changes are made, hit the arrow to begin the upload process. When I make my next video, I will go into the code in a lot more detail. When the upload is finished, unplug the Arduino from the computer, plug it into your LEDs, then plug your power supply in, and you should already see some awesome lighting effects. Thanks for watching. I hope it was very informative. If this video gets a lot of likes, I will release a lot of code for cool light shows. Subscribe for more Dr. D-Flow.